Hi! So today, day 16 of Vlogmas, I have something pretty exciting to share with you and something pretty sad. Something exciting you already know, this is a highly requested video. I'm gonna delve into how I can afford a house. If you wanna know the answer to that without watching the video, I'm just gonna give you like a short answer. I save money and I made money, so like... Mm. The second thing I really wanna say very quickly, if you don't care, if you're not like a subscriber, you, you just don't, it's okay, skip forward um, this time. There won't be daily Vlogmas videos anymore and I'm really upset. It's not up to me. I've explained this in my get ready with me like Q&A thing that when my Mac was getting fixed like apparently something wrong happened with the screen and I thought I could ignore it but it's just kind of like slowly blacking out so um, I can't even see my dock anymore and I'm gonna hand it in to Apple to kind of you know fix it. I won't be able to edit or upload any videos all I can do is just shoot a bunch of stuff and hope to god that when I get it back I can edit it really fast and post it up so I don't know how the next few days is gonna look there might not be any videos at all so I really apologize I made a very public commitment to doing vlogmas and I failed twice and it's just like really sad I will continue to make the videos especially those that I promised you guys yes the house tour is coming up it is I wanted to do it as like a Christmas day special but um, I don't know if it's still gonna work maybe it might so just stay tuned you know subscribe if you haven't already and uh, okay let's jump into how money let's talk about money okay a lot of you might think it's very relevant to know my income and like how much I pay as rental but I will tell you right now it's not. I know y'all see me as a friend and I see you as a friend too but you have to realize that when I put numbers like that out in the air I just know that I'm gonna get judged no matter what I give. Like if the number is really high people think it's really shitty if I give the number really low people think that I'm really shitty. It's just like, like I can't win with like the internet. So I'm not gonna disclose any personal numbers also because with the job that I do with this it's so volatile that I don't even know how much I earn until like the month after when all of my payments are processed so what I will share with you in this video is a ballpark of how okay because I haven't seen houses in a while so the ballpark figures of what um, renting a one to two bedroom apartment is approximately and like different areas and like what other things you should look for and also how much you should be earning how much you should have in your savings that kind of thing I find that infinitely more helpful to you guys just so that you can put the focus on yourself. So instead of thinking like, oh my god, how did she do it? Like, how do you do it? Maybe you can think like how I can do it too. I did not put on lipstick. Hold on. Okay, also, this seems like common sense, but uh, <laughs> I'm not an expert in finance. I'm not an expert in renting houses. I might have information that might be inaccurate. I might have information or like tips that you think are really weird. These are just things that worked for me. And I am nobody but just a 22 year old that rented a place. If you're really serious about, you know, getting your money and your shit together and renting a place, I really highly recommend me not being the only source of information you go to, read up on financial literacy, look at some podcasts, look at other channels that talk about money and savings and all that because that's what I did and I found that very very helpful so please don't don't just don't just uh, this, this is not the end all and be all okay? okay let's talk about planning first your end goal what do you want in a place do you want to rent for a year do you want to save up to buy a house renting a place is not as difficult as one seems to think it is just because I think not a lot of people do it and so people just don't really know you can choose to rent a room Room, the whole apartment, um, an HDB, a condo, a room in a landed spot or if you want to like be a baller and rent out the whole place you can do that too. One bedroom slash studio apartment in condos can range from like 1.4k per month all the way to 2.5. 2.5 I'm talking like dual residences you know like at Boogies or like at Novena or something. Other things to consider while looking at the price is how furnished it is. If it's not furnished you'll have to buy or move your own furniture in. If it's fully furnished is it to your style? Is it very old? Is it very decrepit? Um, also the location, is it near to your work? Is it near town? If you don't mind that it's not near town, then you can probably find something cheaper elsewhere. You can look at sites like 99co, Nesture, Property Guru, or even Airbnb to just kind of look at the spaces available in Singapore. A lot of people seem to think like, oh, condos are one type, you know, HDBs are one type. But there are some HDBs that are remodeled to look really great. Old condos look really different from new condos and you just never know. So take your time, really look at different apartments, look at different websites and don't settle until you find something that's really fantastic because this is a big commitment you're about to make. 
or maybe you want to make. I don't know. I don't know. Just freaking browse and look through. It can't hurt. Don't play the owners or play the agents and be like, oh yeah, I'm super interested, blah, 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 unless you really are. But there's always time for viewings, you know, there are always like different areas that you can look at and just, you know, just put yourself out there. It's kind of like dating. Until you meet the right one, you just gotta know and see what you like, what you don't like, what you want, what you don't want. It also helps for you to write down a list of things that are not negotiable. So if aircon is a non-negotiable thing for you, write that down. I care about having a, a kitchen, a functional kitchen, a big bathroom, or maybe like this, that, um, natural lighting, all these kinds of like random things. If you feel like you cannot budge, like you definitely want that in a house, write that down. Because anytime you're viewing a space, you can check, 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 and then see like, oh, there are added bonuses, or like, oh, that's really great. You know? that kind of thing. In terms of income, you want to look at it in terms of how much you want to save, how much savings you already have, and what's your long-term goal. Are you planning to continue renting and leasing apartments for the rest of your life? Are you planning to move somewhere else? Are you planning to save up to actually buy a house? You need to know how much you want to set aside per month. I really do not recommend you not having any savings at all. I'm so animated with my hands. I'm very passionate about this. Always have savings. Not having financial financial freedom and financial stability is the worst thing you can do for yourself, especially as a young adult. And I don't mean like young adult, like pre-teens John Green reading. I mean like people like us, people who are just starting out in the world, who want stuff, who wants opportunities to travel and see things, and experience things. Don't do that to yourself. If having a house for you is really so difficult that you cannot do anything else, that you literally have to eat Maggie Me every night, like please don't do it. Wait until you're really comfortable in having that kind of expense. So a lot of people were telling me rent should be one third of your income. So let's say if your rent is 1.5, you should be earning 4.5k. As a young graduate, maybe you're earning let's say 3.5, you know, or 3. Then maybe look at apartments where you can share. If it's a room kind of thing and it's a two bedroom, it's a chiller place, maybe it's like 1.6, you know, and then each person can pay 800 and then that works in your income. If you have a good amount of savings, and I'm talking like you can pay rent without working for like six months kind of savings, or if you know that money is definitely gonna come in, if you're the kind that doesn't spend on much else, then maybe you can do half. So maybe half of your rent is your income, and then you can just set aside from that half, you have to pay for all your own shit, and then also set aside at least 5 to 10 percent for savings. You also have to consider expenses for the house, not just for rent. Most of the time for big like electrical appliances or furniture, you only buy it once, but you think about all the small, small recurring payments you have to make, bills, detergent, cleaning supplies, all that kind of thing, they add up. So just be comfortable, give yourself like a good cushion. So for me personally, I got really into kind of like financial planning and budgeting the moment I knew that I was going to pay for this house because I wanted to make sure that I can afford it. It would be so awkward, so embarrassing if I had to move out after three months and be like, oh, sorry, I can't pay rent, like, ah. And it's actually really funny because I remember seeing this from Confessions of a Shopaholic. The protagonist was trying to find ways to kind of pay off her debt because she had racked so much debt up from being a shopaholic. She had two ways of finding that money. One is to save money, two is to make more money. And that's kind of like my whole spiel in this video. Doing both concurrently is way better than focusing so so much on doing just one because I feel like when you focus on just making more money or when you just focus on saving all the money you have, you're kind of depriving yourself of very many opportunities and many like life experiences. That's just me lah. I find that the fastest way to be able to afford this house, to keep it up and to also enjoy myself is to make money at the same time as save money. Over the past few weeks while I was planning, I was kind of like thinking like, hmm, what are some of the habits that I have that I don't even know that I have that help me save a lot of money without even thinking about it, without even depriving myself. And I think I get a lot of it from my mom. My mom is someone that makes very sensible purchases. She never, never splurges. She's just very thrifty and very smart with her money. So I wrote down a bunch of stuff that I want to share with you all about what I do. First thing is that I buy and I cook my own food. Of course, I still go out and eat with my friends, but I'm just gonna sneak a little story time into this like very fast, like fast game, okay? While I was waiting for my O-level results, I was working at a restaurant, I won't say which one, and 
they were charging like 20 dollars, 20 odd dollars for like a plate of something and because I was friends with like the kitchen people and because I was already interested in cooking I could see that the way they were preparing the stuff and it was not worth 20 dollars at all <laughs> and so I kind of like realized from then on that restaurants in Singapore at least for the most part they're just there for kind of like convenience and like insta worthiness and the food wasn't really worth the price tag so for me someone that enjoys cooking I would look at these things and be like huh I can make that at home or when I'm watching stuff like Bon Appetit when I'm watching like I I used to watch Food Network, okay? I'm like, oh, that doesn't look that difficult. Like, I want to try it on my own. So I end up making food that I enjoy. The moment I got this place, I was just so excited to have the kitchen to myself and like have all of my little spices and shop for my own ingredients. That kind of just helped me save a lot of money without even feeling like I'm depriving myself. Hey, if you are not into cooking, can I just say you're in Singapore? Singapore has the best cheap food Ever. You go into any kopitiam or any food court and you can see a whole range of really 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 good food for under $5. I just feel like, like nowhere else, whichever country I've ever been in, they don't have hawker centers or food courts or things like that where you can get very good, very well made, slow cooked food for cheap. If you want to have brunch at a fancy nice place, if you want to have like a good dinner somewhere else, if you want to get truffle on your pizzas, fine. That's okay, just don't make it a daily thing because then after that you're just like, oh it's just another meal at a restaurant and it's not special or fun or exciting anymore, so that's just me. The second biggest thing is this, it's not going to come as a shock to anyone, but I don't really take taxis or grab wherever I go. The only times I take it is when I'm really 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 running late and I absolutely have to take it or just when it's too late and then like public transport is closed already. That's like the biggest reason why most of the time I try my absolute best to take the MRT. Thank goodness I've got concession. Dude, I didn't know that like concession was a thing for NUS students. So basically you pay $45 for unlimited rides on the train. $45? That's about three grab rides, no. Like it's it's I feel like grabbing or taking a taxi just becomes a very bad habit and at the same time you burn so much cash like immediately. So that's just something that I do lah. I mean like if you want to take cabs, it's up to you, but that's how I save a lot of money. I've heard of people spending like $700, $800 on grab rides per month and I'm like... The third one is a bit controversial but basically I don't drink coffee and so like I don't fuck with Starbucks. <laughs> when I was in secondary school, JC, I had the occasional frap, I had the occasional like green tea latte but that's about it. And now I just don't even bother. There's so many other really great drink options that you can have. Like I like the soya bean from Mr. Bean. Um, usually I can just pop by into like a supermarket because it's like very cheap, right? They usually have this like cold section where you can just grab a drink. And most of the time I get mineral water because I just like water and I just want to drink water. First of all, it saves me a lot of liquid calories so I don't get very lethargic. I don't like crash after the sugar high and I just don't get a muffin top out of it. And also at the same time, that's like one third of the price of a Starbucks drink. And I don't like the taste of Starbucks drinks. They leave a weird film on your mouth. That's just not my thing. I do really like the chai latte from Coffee Bean. That's the only drink that I sometimes get when I'm outside and I want a place to sit down and I want to chill. A lot of the times, cafes have very highly priced, sometimes overpriced drinks because they are accounting for the fact that you'll probably sit there and spend time and use their facilities and you know be at their tables and so that's what they're charging you for. So if you're getting a takeaway Starbucks, it all the more doesn't make sense. So that's just, that's just me lah. If you want to continue, fine. I'm just telling you how I did it, okay? I feel like I have to be so defensive about this now, I'm like, it's just me. <laughs> the fourth thing is that I don't regularly club and I don't go like drinking nights and stuff like that. Some of y'all have actually said hi to me in clubs before but if you realise, think about it, I'm only in clubs like once or twice a year. When there's an event, when a friend wants me to go, when it's like a special, kind of like I just want to go out for a night, dress up with my girlfriends and we just want to go out. I go because of the company. Usually we also pre-game so we don't spend like $32 on a single cocktail. You know what I'm talking about. You know where I'm talking about. <sighs> And it also helps that I'm a lightweight so I can just get one or two drinks and I'm really like, yeah! So it's not so bad. But if you're a heavy drinker, if you need a lot to feel the buzz, then I suggest you pre-game at home. Maybe just bring like a small bottle and do it discreetly. I'm not encouraging anyone to break the rules. <laughs> 
there are also a bunch of like liquid buffets I know that you can like pre-game for and it's a little bit cheaper provided that you go a little bit earlier that kind of thing I don't know too much about it because like I said I don't do this very often so you can go and find out by yourself lah haul but for me I just nah my friends are not clubbers I myself am not like a huge clubber uh, it's only fun when you're drunk and then when you're drunk when you're too drunk it just turns like a bad night so I just ugh. I rather stay at home and I watch like Netflix so Okay, the big final thing is just the saving money kind of culture. I'm not a very wasteful person. When I'm eating stuff, right, I refuse to just eat half of it. Even if like, it sucks, I just finish it because I'm like, oh, it's such a waste. <laughs> it sounds very lame, but it's true. I just don't like seeing things go to waste. And so when I'm making my purchases, I do usually a lot of research. When I'm doing skincare reviews and stuff, that's why most of my skincare reviews are good because I'm already doing so much research and I know that it's going to work for my skin, hopefully. And I've also been saving my paycheck since I was a very young person. Like I said, I was working after my O-levels while waiting for results. I also did the same thing um, during the A-level kind of break. And all the money I got from those two things went straight into my savings account. I didn't even take out anything and go like, I have money, let's spend it. No, I didn't do that at all. The only times I took out the money were for travelling. I know some of y'all are like me as well, but I think we're very lucky to have parents that are okay with buying us food, okay with giving us a small allowance, especially because I didn't work at all the moment I started studying. They don't want me to be distracted in that way. They just wanted me to work during the holidays because like, I was like bumming around and I felt like that gave me a sense of purpose and they were also okay with paying my phone bills and everything. I know not everyone's situation is like mine. I know some people that have to work to pay for literally everything that they have and they do and so respect man like props off to you do you want to spend six dollars on this starbucks drink right now or do you want to wait for it to grow into ten dollars because inflation of money is a real thing it happens all the time and so putting your money in a bank is a much better option than spending the money straight up the moment you have it i'm also going to throw in this suggestion robo investors but i do want to be clear that i don't know very much about it i was trying to do research about it but it's just like very confusing and i'm not like a business finance kind of person so anyone else that knows better about like robo investors like smartly and stash away and wealth wealth something Put it down in the comments, let everyone know what's up. But basically, robo-investors give you a option to put your money with them. They buy bonds and shares and stocks for you and they just slowly let the money grow. It's supposedly very low risk and it's a very, very long-term thing. So if you're looking to make money fast, that that's not the way to go. But I'm trying to do that now, but I'm not seeing very big results. But also, it's my first year doing it. So if you just want somewhere else to put your money instead of the bank where you can earn 0.001% interest rate, Maybe that's something you want to look at. On that topic, saving money to make money, let's talk about making money. First thing is, please find a job that you will like. That saying about find a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life, I believe it to be true because I think if you find yourself having the purpose and find the drive to do something that you're already supposed to do for money, you're going to do a damn good job at it. People are going to recognize that you're doing a damn good job at it. You're going to be happy doing it and you're just going to be able to climb that career ladder. Instead of doing something that you just know you're doing to spend the time to get the money and to get out when it's like 5 p.m. Okay, some people may say, Brenda, I've been looking for a job for damn long. Like if I don't take this job right, I won't be able to earn any money at all. Being more tenacious and finding a job, like really, really look for the job that you want that fits your skills that you know you can excel in is way better than finding just a random job to kind of live by for a while because leaving that job would be very hard to explain to your second employer presumably for the better job that you wanted in the first place than to spend time and actually look for that good job in the first place I'm around people that are all fresh graduates at this point they're all looking for a job and a lot of people are offering them internships or offering them like really really measly salary and that's the thing about life, about companies and working for someone else, is that they always want the most out of it. So some companies tend to offer you internships but make you do the same things as a full-timer and then they just pay you way less. And don't ever settle for that. Know what you are worth, know what your degree, if you've gotten a degree or a diploma, is worth and make sure to negotiate properly 
what your salary should be, what kind of benefits you're gonna get, what kind of long-term goals, aspects that you can achieve in that job. This is turning into a career seminar more than a how to save money thing, but it's true. Learning to negotiate and knowing what you're worth, knowing what you can expect, going around asking other people in your related field how much they are earning, how much you should be charging, etc. Be it freelancers or people that are asking for a monthly salary, you have to know what you're worth so that you don't get cheated. A lot of people are just so excited to get jobs and they're like, you can pay me $50, I'm good. Like, don't do that to yourself, please. Like, have some self-respect. Even as an influencer, I hate the word, or like content creators, I still do ask around. I ask PR people, I ask other like influencers how much they're charging, how much is this worth, that worth, so that we know that we are not selling ourselves short. And that's so important, like building a community of people that are comfortable to talk about money gets everyone on the right path. The second big thing on how to make more money is to have multiple sources of income. And this has helped me so much. On months where YouTube is like a drought and there are no brand deals, there are no sponsorships, no one wants to collaborate, AdSense is being an asshole, my stuff are getting demonetized, like all that sexual harassment stuff, right? A lot of the woke stuff, they're all demonetized because YouTube is so uncomfortable with women talking about sexuality. On those months, I really get a very, very nice cushion from the sales from Go Margo. Even on months where I'm like barely scraping by, I'm like, okay, at least I scrape by. Starting your own business isn't the only way to earn money. You can do a lot of side gigs as well. This isn't compulsory. If you have a full-time job that's already tiring enough, you absolutely don't have to do this. But for students especially, if you just got like a little bit of time on your hands, if you want to just earn like a couple extra hundred dollars so that you can like finance your own vacation, like that's what I would suggest you do. There are also a couple of apps and they can just pay you by the hour. They're like different stuff. Like are they catering? Or like which is, it's just a bunch of like different short-term jobs I don't have too much of an authority on it because I really don't know much about it I've never been on those apps but you can just go and find out more for yourself so that's it I think I don't think I have anything more to say I don't have anything more planned if you have any questions please leave them in the comments I'll get back to you or I'll make an updated video I hope you found this helpful I hope you can take away from the fact that budgeting and financial planning and financial literacy are all very important things that we as adults now have to consider and I hope you are inspired to save money and make money and just be very smart about your choices. And I also hope the people that go in the comments that write to me in like a third person way, how does she afford an apartment? Oh my god, she's just a student there. Eh? How does she do it? Where's the money coming from? Sweetie, I've been playing this Hannah Montana game for like three years now, okay? I've been working this full-time while also being a full-time student, so I deserve this, okay? So if you like this video, like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And also turn on the notifications because I don't know when I will see you again. Hopefully tomorrow or the day after. But yeah, bye!